Hey everybody, welcome to another other episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. Uh, this is the grand episode 200 of the show. Um, <laughs> I'm especially tired. I just came back from a conference, um, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but I just want to know that this is a special show for the Liberty podcast uh 200 of anything is absolutely amazing that's about four years of of, of consistent every week podcast episodes uh from me and from from the show here um we've gone from a, a a single show that was recorded on my phone um to with my kitchen in the background uh with multiple podcasts now with many people contributing uh to the network and to the review so um thank you everybody who's who's become a part of the Liberty family. And for all the viewers and listeners of the show, um, thank you for taking time out of your lives to, to be a part of, uh, this experience and being a part of, of, of the Liberty community. Uh, and especially anybody who's actually listened or watched every <laughs> episode of the 200, uh, of, of the show, you, you are especially amazing, uh, and dedicated. So thank you for, for all your help and support. Couldn't do this podcast without you. Um, so there you go. So, uh, of course, um, this week we're going to go straight into the show. We have 10 new reviews for you, four for myself. Again, a shorter week because I was at a, at a conference hanging out with some literary authors, um, but also some stuff from um, Ian for Ian's Picks of the Week. So, uh, I will be telling you about my reviews, which include Kaiju Battlefield Surgeon, a literary adventure, uh, Essence, a Divine Dungeon anthology, Fresh Blood, Survival World Book Number One, uh, and The Broken Sword. Uh, and of course, six reviews from Ian and Ian's Picks of the Week. Uh, but before we get into any of that, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. And in Lit RPG News, we're going to begin with a nice uh, sale deal for some Lit RPG titles that are coming out. Uh, Dan Oshinafin let us know that he is putting the Apocalypse Gate series on sale starting next week, uh, running up towards the launch of Apocalypse Gate number five. Uh, so it actually is going to start on the 17th of August uh, for Apocalypse Gate one. And each week, um, ish, uh, every two days, actually, I should say that the next book in the series, so Apocalypse Gate number one, will be starting to go on sale on the 17th. Uh, Apocalypse Gate two on the 20th. Apocalypse Gate number three on the 23rd. Apocalypse Gate four on the 26th up until number five coming out on the 5th of December or sooner if the author can uh, can get it out sooner, of course. Um, so there you go. Um, and also in Little Bit of News, we have Apocalypse, uh, the System Apocalypse issue number two. The comic is actually out for sale now. So just as an FYI, if you like the first comic book, I did, I made sure to purchase it. Uh, number two is out now. And it's always an interesting experience to see um, a novel um go to a manga or to a, to a, to in this case, a comic, um, to see the visualization of, of, of an artist, uh, for a story you're already familiar with. So this is something that's interesting. Definitely go check it out. If you've enjoyed, uh, that comic book series, uh, also in Liberty news, we have a quick message from Mark Carlson, who's the author of World tree online. He recently published the uh, second audiobook in his series. He says that, um, in news, the second book, uh, hit audible this week and Amazon lost four chapters. <laughs> So, uh, Annalise, which is the narrator, uh, is working to fix the problem. And once it's fixed, a redownload will be needed. So if you purchased the audiobook and you found that there are some missing chapters or like, there's a big jump in the story somewhere, uh, that might be the case. But once that's worked out, uh, we'll also let you know that you just go redownload it and that should fix the issue entirely. So, uh, we've been linking the short course to that particular, um, audiobook. Um, also in Liberty News, we have a couple of Liberty authors who were interviewed by the JVD podcast. Uh, Eric Rounds was interviewed this week, and last week it was Robert Bevins of Cavers and Creatures. It was really funny. Uh, so definitely go check those out if you uh, if those authors are among your favorite. Uh, let's see. Also, um, Little Bridge narrator and one of the handsomest Canadians I know, and a few of his friends have started a podcast called Dice Shame. That's going to be Justin Thomas James, whose name I forgot to put in the actual notes. Um, he yeah, uh, he describes the audio podcast as it's a D and D podcast uh, where we get into our roles and shame dice that don't serve us well. Uh, chronic natural wonders are the worst. We do our best to explain certain rules as we go. So if you're new to D and D, we hope you learn a bit about how it's done, but mainly hope you have fun listening. Uh, so he says that uh, Justin Thomas James is playing a 
uh, Krell the Grave Cleric, who by episode four has already died, nearly died twice. So they're, they're actually up to episode five as to the recording of this podcast. Uh, but he that talked about on his on his Facebook page. So we're letting you know about if you enjoy his narrations of uh, many uh, great liturgy stories um, on his own or also through um, Sambu Theater. Uh, and here we go. Uh, Liturgy Podcast went to the 20 books to 50K convention that happened this last week in Vegas. That's why we were... <laughs> The uh, the show was coming out just a little bit later than normal uh, this particular week. We had a great experience. Um, we went last year, enjoyed it this year, and and it's not just because uh, I I do writing as well uh, in the literary genre, but also because I get a chance to hang out with literary authors, and I'm always up for meeting our people, uh, our, our fellow authors, and our fellow. Um, readers and viewers of the show of course um and it was always a great experience i actually had a couple of people come up to say oh i i watched the show i i enjoy it a lot and it's helping to inform me about uh, a story i could be writing my own no my own literary story or just as like oh I, i'm a fan of the show i like i like literary. thank you very much uh so that was always fun for me but more fun is the opportunity to hang out with uh, some of my favorite uh, people in the universe, <laughs> our fellow Liberty authors, uh, and they're all very, very good people. So I've, I've enjoyed meeting and talking to them and, and, and hanging out with them. So it's just always great to, to see our, our Liberty authors and, and hang out with them. Um, okay, on to stuff that is out now. Um, stuff I haven't read it, it came out recently, and then includes Delver's LOC, Surviving Ludus, Artifice Universe Collection, book number one. This is a short story collection set in the Delver's LOC universe, including a story by Blaze Corbin himself. Also out now is the fifth book in the Realm Between series, The Evil Within, uh, as is Prime Verse for Slogan. Also out is Dodge, Evil Mourn, book number three. Uh, and there are stuff that came out. Uh, in new audiobooks, you actually have a bit more here. Uh, Sky Realms Online, Silver Peak. We have again the second book in the uh, World Trail Online series by Mark uh, M. A. Carlson, rather. Uh, the Duchess of Hammer, Second Night Begins, uh, World Trail Online series, book number two. Uh, the Idol System, I should put together a, um, the author, uh, Idol System, put together a four book audiobook collection for books one through four. So that's a great deal, especially if you're using a single credit to purchase it. So I definitely recommend you hit that one up. Um, the fifth book in the Stone League series uh, by Carrie Summers is now called Vault of the Magi, uh, as is the most recent story from Eden Red, uh, Primeval Guardian Craft, book number one. Uh, the second book in the Kaiju Wars Offline series, uh, Kaiju for Dummies, is out as an audio book as well. And uh, The Dark Path, uh, A Grim Dark Liberty um, by Stuart Thalman, narrated J. Scott Bennett, is out as an audio book. This one actually just came out as well as an ebook. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to, uh, to read ebook and you like audiobooks, give it a shot. Okay, on to upcoming little bit of just where I read up a bunch of stuff that's coming out in the near future as I know about it. Um, there are a couple of new editions of the list. Um, on November 17th, it'll be Strangers Among Strangers, Realm of Archon. Um, this is a new book in the Realm of Archon series called Dark Covenant. The fourth book in the Arcane Alliancium called Death March will be out on November the 19th. On November 22nd, it'll be Hard Mode, the second book in the Chronicles of Ethan series. Uh, on November 29th, Axiom, a Divine Dungeon series uh, novel, uh, Arturian's Archives, book number one, will be out. I'm actually really excited to, to return to the Divine Dungeon universe. Uh, this is a co-authored book with Dakota Crowd for Dennis Vandenkirk and so I'm hoping I'm saying that right, uh, but it's a new uh, shared universe series, the Divine Universe, so I uh, hope it's good. Uh, the third book in the Darkness Online series, Darkness Conquered, will be out on November the 30th. Uh, the eighth book in the System Apocalypse series will be out on December the 1st, called Rebel Star. Uh, the fourth book in the Dreams 8 Saga, Lost in the Game, will be out December the 3rd. Uh, the fifth book in the Apocalypse Gate series will be out on December the 5th. Uh, the second book of the Knockout series called uh, Update will be out on November, the, sorry, December the 9th. Uh, the last time loop book number one will be out on December the 10th. The third book in the Hero Line series out on December the 13th. The seventh book in the Good Guy series, December the 14th, one of my favorite series. Actually, I had a chance to uh, talk to and hang out with Eric Ugland uh, this past week, so it was kind of neat. Um, the, this one's new, um, the path of darkness, black flame online, glory of the formation of the empire will be out on December the 15th. I have no idea about this one, but, um, it says it's literally you. So I'll have to wait and see. Um, the third book in the Chronicles of Ethan series about in December the 20th. 
Um, the second book in the Underdog series, I like book number one, um, will be out on December 23rd. Uh, an absolutely new series from Vasily Mahenko, uh, author of the Way of the Shaman series, called No Mistakes, World of the Change, to book number one will be out on January the 6th of 2020. Unless you're really curious about this one. I'm not sure if it's going to be a real life RPG or it just has phone systems from, from the cover art. I'm kind of curious what it's, what it's going to be about, but the silly man always writes good stuff for, for, at least to me. So I, I'm definitely gonna pick that one up. Um, the third book in the Guardian series will be out on January the 9th, um, 2020. The fourth book in the Dragon Heart series, Sea of the Sands, will be out on January the 22nd. The fourth book in the Hero Online series will be out on January 24th, 2020. Uh, the Bad Guy series, book number three, will be out on February the 6th, uh, 2020, Skulls and Thrones. And again, the second book in the Invasion series by Vasily Mahenko as well, will be out on February the 10th, 2020. The fourth book in the Seed of Chaos series, uh, Gods of Ash and Amber, will be out on February the 29th. 2020 and a new series from magical books uh from roman uh Proko- prokovyov will be out on march the 9th 2020 called the Inc- incarnator product stellar book number one actually this author um has been translated from the for like a steampunkish series before um this is the first i've seen of his little pretty stuff so um curious to see how this turns out Okay, that's it for stuff that's coming out in the future. On to new releases and reviews. Okay, first up this week is going to be Kaiju Battlefield Surgeant, a lit RPG adventure uh, written by Matt Dinneman, that, uh the same dude who wrote Dominion of Blades. That's what it actually says on the cover. Um, it is... 844 pages is $4.99 that is available on Kindle Limited. And here is, well, actually, instead of me reading the author's description, let me have you uh, listen to him uh, talk about this. Uh, so, Matt Dineman, you're the author of uh, Kaiju Battlefield Surgeon. Tell me about your book. Okay, so I have a new book. It's called Kaiju Battlefield Surgeon. It is a horror lit RPG. It's bloody, it's gory. Um, it's about a dude that gets trapped in the game by serial killers, and it's a full immersion, full pain game where they like to capture people, torture them, and then bring them back to life, and then torture them again. And all while there's giant monsters, kaiju, Godzilla-sized monsters bouncing around fighting, and you play a character, or the main character plays a character, it's called a worm surgeon, and his job is to heal the kaiju from the inside and the outside, all the while he's playing the game. And if you like guts, if you like gore, if you like sexually active donkeys, you know, I think it's I think it's a pretty good book. And uh, what were your inspirations for this uh, for this book? Well, I'm a little RPG author. I have been for a while, and I love the genre. I love the stories. Um, but you know, there's not too many horror lit RPGs. There's a few of them, and and they're great. But most of them are tend to be either zombie themed or like dungeon core themed. And I haven't seen too many fantasy horror lit RPG novels that take the gore and the and the, the, the horrific themes like dealing psychological torture, um, physical torture, to in a way that I, I liked it, so I wanted to write one, and it's what I wanted to read, so that's what I did, I wrote it. And there we go. In the author's own words, uh, that is what the story is about. Um, the actual review goes on from here. Um, this is this is a weird, dark, gory, mind messing story. Um, there are some parts that feel more like a normal XP grinding quest, um, which I think anybody would enjoy. Um, but then there are other parts that just stand out as either weird, um, as as gory, or just messing with your head. Um, and I was really cool with some of the biological gore part of, part of the story takes place inside of these giant, uh, kaiju monsters where the main character, as the author described it, um, is, is, is in a virtuality game, um, is supposed to be like killing parasites and like giant tapeworms and, and these other like creepy entities actually inside of these monsters in these giant kaiju monsters. And it's like described, uh, very graphically, both the biological portions and also the, the creepy nature of the, the, 
monthly parasites and stuff. Um, and I was actually okay with that, even though it was very descriptive um, for, for me and my, my brain, I'm okay with like biological stuff. It's real, it's, it's, it's human. And yes, humanity is messy and so is biology. Um, my brain is okay with that. Not everybody's brain is okay with that. If you can't stand like real, like documentaries where they show, you know, people being cut up and you see actual organs or things, not the, not the book feed. This is that that part alone is going to like mess you up. Um, however, there were other scenes in, in this novel that was like, oh no, not for me. Like particular scene, and these these are things that are very skippable. Um, and I actually enjoyed uh, the rest of the story. Actually, I thought the story was great on the whole. Um, but there are scenes that are going to again be super graphic uh, and super creepy, and and on the horror side of things, which is what the author intended. Um, uh, for example, there's a couple scenes where. Um, the scene with the testicles, uh, uh, was a little bit too much. Um, it was a little too graphic. I, I skipped it to that part. I also skipped it to the part where there's the 50 points of amplification. Um, it was a little too torturous for me. And I was like, okay, I get why it's here. This is part of the author's, um, love of all the like, horror movies combined with like this kind of stuff. Um, and it's very much in, in play with the story. And I, I, w- I wasn't too horrified about it actually like what had happened to the main character because he kind of signed up for it. Um, but the actual script was like, okay, I, I'm just going to skip that this far. And I, I did. And a lot of those scenes that might be a little too uh, gross for some people are, are very skippable. And the rest of the story is still very enjoyable. Um, on the other hand, there are scenes in the story that were just so well written and so touching that they brought me to tears. Like they genuinely did. Like, so there's, there's just huge like expanse of like these, 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 these feelings that I have about the story. Some are just like, oh, that's not, that's gross and torturous. And other ones like, that made me cry. That was so sad. And other were another scenes are just like, that is that that is so mean for the mother to do to these characters. And 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 the story is is disturbing sometimes. They're disturbing twists, especially towards the end. Um, and there are, and I, I cared of the main character, even though I was appalled by some of the dark decisions he made. And just to be like, completely clear, this, there are no heroes in the story. This is a dark kind of twisted, weird story. There are horror moments. There are terribly dark ones. Um, but there really are no heroes in this entire thing. So I don't expect this to be ending in kind of this happy momentous thing. It's just, it's just not, um, on the, so just that's the story on the game mechanic side. Very happy. I mean, generally, um, I, I really like the idea where uh, in an RPG game, your task is to help heal kaiju monsters by killing their parasites and disease. It's a very interesting concept that I've never seen before. And I'm always really impressed by what Matt, Matt Dinevin comes up with in his outer brain <laughs> to do these kind of stories. Um, and I, I like the storyline. I like how the game mechanics were important to it. Themes of revenge and redemption and desires for forgiveness were really touching to me. Um, and it's just a bunch of great, good stuff, um, that kept the game quests interesting, um, especially once it started tying together to the larger shoreline. So the game mechanics stuff, super awesome, really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, and they were a bit impactful in, in every single aspect of the story. Um, overall, this novel is not for everybody. And just, just, that's the truth. It's okay. Um, it's weird and it's dark and it's sad and it's sometimes gross. Um, and it's definitely not for anybody who's, who's squeamish or doesn't like horror. Um, but it really has like in some great pieces to it um, that stuck with me for hours after I was finished reading. So for me, I really enjoyed it. I do enjoy it so much. I'm giving it an eight out of 10, which is, means it's a great novel to me. And that's mostly because of the originality of this thing. It had an emotional impact on me, um, whether it was being kind of grossed out or, or fascinated by kaiju biology um, or just brought to tears by some of the super sad moments um of the story and so for me i i, I like weird things and i was okay with some of the biological grossness uh so i was i, I was genuinely surprised how much i enjoyed this uh, but again not for everybody so just be aware of what what's in this thing um i really like the forward of this novel where the author's like this is dedicated to my mom please don't read this mom I don't want to have weird discussions at Christmas. And that kind of sums up kind of the, the, the warning for some literary readers. Uh, if it's not something you think you're comfortable with, please don't pick it up. Uh, but if you're kind of the person who likes horror and is okay with this kind of stuff, I think this is something that's really unique. So it gets a score of an 8 out of 10. Kaiju Battlefield Surgeant, a little bit amateur with the score of 8 out of 10. And next up we have Essence, a Divine Dungeon Anthology. 
Uh, there's uh, quite a few out this year, including uh, James Arwater, Dennis Van Der Kricken, Alexis Keen, Rohan Holbekar, uh, Stephen Wilden, um, Ryan Ball, Raymond Johnson, and of course, Dakota Crouch. It is uh, 248 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Um, there is in the novel description a, a long list of, of each uh, description of each little short story. I'm not going to read them off. Um, you can read that there. I will read you the uh, novel description now. It says, Infernal or celestial young world each has their own path to power. Delve into the world of the divine dungeon with a new and old cultivators alike. Discover the Lion Kingdom's beginning, learn the origin origin of Odin and his ravens, and take a philosophical approach to cultivation. These stories and more, including the first short story anthology set in Dakota Crow's Divine Dungeon Universe. So there we go. Um uh, like the reviews is this. Like many short story collections, there are going to be always going to be those stories that you love and some that you just don't. Um, that's kind of the, the, the interesting joyous nature of like short story collections. You have these little story nuggets that have the potential to be amazing to introduce to new authors and new storytellers without really having to invest, you know, hours and hours of your time. Uh, these are like 15, 20 minutes, you know, maybe sometimes an hour short, depending on the length. Um, but they're, um, they, they have so much like nice potential. Um, I'm always a sucker for a good anthology, and this is a good one. Um, it has a few great gems in there, and I, on the whole, I found it uh, really nice that I could go back to a favorite series of mine, the Divine Dungeon series. Um, and even though the, some of the stories are very much not in the same style of Dakota Grout, um, some of them did a really good job of storytelling. So overall, uh, the novel gets a score of 7.3 out of 10. Um, so I'm actually going to go into the individual review street short story if you want to stick around for that. Um, starting off with Lions, uh, Lion Start by Rohan Hublikar. Um, it's, uh, this is a short, short story about a little dungeon knife to save a friend and clean his core. Um, it's not a bad dungeon dive and has some likable characters and especially like the relationship between the teen characters. I think the relationship between those characters is actually my favorite portion of it. Um, not an amazing short story, but it does some neat things. So um, get, give it a score of 7.3 out of 10. Um, the next one is Legacy of Thunder by Stephen Wilden. Gets a score of 7.2 out of 10. Um, it's it's essentially a, a Norse and lightning god themed short story with cultivating nation of Asgardia having a special festival and competition that gives lightning essence. It's a cute story, but it was kind of predictable based on the names of the use for characters. So um it just it was a little predictable. Like, okay, this is this is kind of a neat twist, but predictable. So a seven point two. Still enjoyable though. Um Fight uh Flight of the Glitter Filth by Ryan Ball. Um this one actually got a six out of ten. It didn't quite work for me. Um I liked the beginning which talks about what happens when a cleric keeps adding fire to a ceiling. Um however, um this mm, in the main story, the main character must rescue a kidnapped glitter flit and try to fix his essence problems. Um, however, the end kind of spoiled it for me because even though like the beginning portion was pre pretty decent, um, and it goes into the dungeon core kind of dungeon knife, um, the end was just so sudden and it was so wand wavy. It kind of ruined, for me at least, the stuff that came before it. So it got a six out of ten for me. Uh, it definitely lost me at the end. Um, Splat by Raymond Johnston. It's the next one. I go with Raymond Johnston. Full disclosure, uh, is is a member of the Liberty Podcast family. He does our um. Little bit of audiobook podcast. He also writes short stories, and he he was picked on his own merit uh, by this particular author and and his and his uh, publication publication company. Uh, but Raymond Johnson wrote Splat, and Splat is the name of the dungeon goblin that keeps dying by being splatted. Um, it was funny um, with the cute, funny main character. Um, I I'm always actually I always like writing Raymond Johnson for the short stories that he's done. Um, and this is no different. It gets a score of 7.6 out of 10. Um, it's cute and it's fun and it's short. And it, it, uh, so they're always neat little adorable stories. So I enjoyed that one. Um, the next one is The Spirit Dungeon by Alexis Keen. Um, this one didn't work for me either. Um, and that's mostly because, well, first of all, I should say, I like the idea of an alcohol producing dungeon, um, but the story itself had issues. Um, this, like the actual writing is fine. No, no problem with the actual like technical writing or anything. Um, but it had overly long cultivation details for a short story. I'm like, it's one of those things that 
if you're reading this anthology, you're probably already familiar with some of the details of the Divine Jin series. Um, so you don't need these long paragraphs about what cultivation is. Um, and there were quite a few of them in the short story. So they they felt like they were unneeded and they were a little repetitive for stuff I already knew. Um, it, and what really lost me though were the characters and I never really cared about them. Um, so I never cared if they survived the dungeon or got into trouble and the end was just a bit abrupt to satisfy me. So it just didn't work. Not a bad story. Again, a six out of 10 is not a bad score. She was like, this doesn't work for me. Other people might really enjoy it, but just didn't work for me. Um, next is The Hidden Lantern by James uh, Awater. It gets a score of six out of 10. Um, this is essentially a cameo story. It doesn't bring anything new to the series or even to the to the to the universe. Um, a character is sent into the Mountain Dale, and you get lots of main series characters making brief appearances. Um, and you get like a, a few details, or you or it feels like it might connect some characters, but it's nothing you've never really read about for it. So it's all it's all familiar people, and it's just not much more than just a cameo story. People pop familiar characters just kind of pop in and out. Um, so it just didn't really work for me. So six out of ten. Next is Butcher Boy by Dakota Kraut. Um, this gets an easy eight out of ten. Great. I'm always a huge fan of Dakota Kraut as, as a writer. He's always uh, writes these interesting stories. Um, they usually have um, some very funny puns, but even putting those aside, he writes good characters that he just kind of enjoy. And this is one of them. It was a story about a street urchin that gets a chance to better himself. Um, just not the way he expected to. And it's a really, it's a great story for me. Um, I thought I love like the subtle world building that was in this short story. Not only do you get the insight into like this particular character's lifestyle and life as an urchin, but also like the larger world building. And, it's, and again, it's a short story. So it's really always amazing to me how much detail and how much um, interesting, like just little nuggets of like a background information for the culture um, that really makes it fleshed out and feel like really full that Dakota put into this, <laughs> like relatively small short story. Um, and I, it just ended way too soon for me. Like I could genuinely see like a larger, like novel from, from this little short story. And I just wanted like a dozen more chapters to read. And whenever that happens to me, I, I know it's a great story. So this short story definitely gets an eight out of 10, my favorite of the, of the anthology. Um, and last but not least is Axiom by Dennis, uh, Vanderkriken. The story starts off with a group of kids, uh, who get their names in a particular ceremony. And I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, the beginning of this feels like it has nothing to do with the Divine End series. Um, it feels more like a fantasy coming age story. Um, however, towards the middle of the story, um, the connection is finally made back to the Divine End series. It, there's an explanation of the lore behind what happened in the first half of the novel. Um, and it was really enjoyable. It's just that that first portion was like, oh, I, what what is this? I was like, this doesn't feel anything like the Divine End series, it's not the world. But there's a very good reason that. So if you feel the same way when you're reading the short story, just know that it does connect. So just keep going out with it. Um, and, and apparently it's also connected to uh, the novel I spoke about earlier about the podcast, um, a new side story series from the same author. So um, that might be part of what this is promotional for that particular novel. Um, I enjoyed it though. Eventually <laughs> gets a score of 7.3 to 10 for me for Axiom by Dennis uh, van der Kriken. So there you go. Again, overall, good stories in the series. Um, and I like going back to the universe. So overall scores again, 7.3 out of 10. And next we have Fresh Blood by Jessica Hicks. Uh, it is 271 pages, $2.99 available on Kindle Limited. Uh, here's the author's description. He was climbing up the corporate ladder. Now he's climbing the food chain. Felix used to be a traveling salesman drifting through the galaxy and hawking his way as used to be. That is until a freak accident in an out-of-the-way system. One worth landing later and Felix find himself stranded on a wild alien planet front and center in the deadly role he never auditioned for to entertain his secret audience. The upside? A fellow passenger made it to the escape pod with Felix with his reptilian stranger at his side. He's not totally alone. The downside? They don't share a language. Worse, there's not one scrap of survival know-how between them, and an ominous clawing is coming from outside the escape pod. As if the struggle to avoid becoming a lunch and finding some of their own wasn't enough, an autonomous implant from an unknown source seeks to integrate them into the system. So they were, I actually picked this up on a recommendation from a different author, um, well, the author in Liturgy. Um, and the author has 
advertise this novel in several of his groups, but it's not actually lit RPG. Um, but the author is also not advertising it on Amazon in the novel description or in the title as lit RPG. So it's not going to get a score for it. It's for me. Um, but just be aware that this is a survival and crafting story with a few game lit elements. And that's not that bad. I said the authors don't advertise on review, so it's not really a big deal for me. Um, and I actually like the story. Um, there are, again, the game elements exist here um, and some sparse combat here. Um, I like the crafting of the story. There's a gradual development of technology, base building, resource gathering that, that kind of um, revolves around an implant that's placed into the uh, main character and the secondary character's um, brain that gives them these like um, game-like powers and abilities. Um, and that includes, again, um, things like respawning and an inventory system and a crafting system um, that lets them like pick up resources and get upgrades and like use shortcut like game like elements to like build things. However, again, there is no like progression system, which is why it's not RPG. So they're not like leveling up, they're not gaining like skill increases. The best that you could say is that they're gaining, um, they're advancing a tech tree, uh, or like they're advancing a crafting kind of system tree. Uh, that's about as close as you can for some people that might be enough uh to be liberty but in this case for me it's not because that's just that's the system but essentially like a magic system and there's no actual personal uh growth for any of the characters and that's just not what this uh system is um had it been there that would be a different case but i, I still actually enjoy the crafting um if you're looking for an action story though, this is definitely not it. There are some action scenes. There are a couple of fights here and there, but there are these long stretches of just crafting and dialogue, which is kind of funny sometimes and character development and just other kinds of tension sometimes, but not necessarily action. Um, so just be aware of what this is. I enjoyed it on the whole, get score 7.2 out of 10 for me. Um, Mostly because again, there's some game elements here that I did enjoy crafting and such. Uh, but again, that that's one of those things I enjoy. So um, Fresh Blood Survival World, book number one with the score 7.2 out of 10. And next is the This Broken Sword, uh, Told Online Episode 1. It a little bit of Sanka by TJ Reynolds. It is 98 pages, $2.99 that is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. My name is Dahlia Otto. I'm 16 years old. I left everything behind to join Tall Online, the world's most popular VR MMORPG. My parents are dead, and I only have one option left, join Toll's most dangerous realm and fight for survival. But my plan goes haywire when my greatest asset is nerfed by the game's AI. Now, I have to recover the pieces of a powerful family heirloom, cleave through bloodthirsty baddies, and trade every scrap of loot I can before I'm arrested and forced to pay off my father's debt. Easy, right? Okay, um, right off the bat, there are a couple things that bothered me about the series. Um, one, the author spells literally wrong. And it's just, I know it's, a, it's just this tiny thing that shouldn't bother me, but it does. Um, it's not, it's lit RPG, not L-I-T space RPG. Um, I know that it's a small thing, but it's like writing out fantasy as fan, F-A-N space T-A-S-Y. It's just biblical me. Um, reading the novel on the PC was a little challenging. There's this weird formatting issue um, where there are no paragraph annotations nor extra spacing after the paragraph. So it kind of made each page look like this one big block of text. And it might just be an Amazon thing because on my phone, it was cool. Um, there was a little extra space in between paragraphs, still no annotations. Um, but on the PC specifically, everything was crunched up together. So just be aware of that if you read on the PC. Um, other than that, it's actually a nice story. Um, it does a good job setting up the way the main character has to go into the game world, um, gives her plenty of things to do. Um, it's a slice of life story that is meant to be a serial story. Um, so don't expect a complete plot on this one little novella. Instead, you get a good bit of setup in this episode and then a big pause on the story at the end. So just be aware of that as well. Uh, so fairly decent action, better dialogue and world building both in a game and out. So um, it does get a score of 7.1 out of 10. There you go. And on to Ayn's Picks of the Week. This is a segment where Ayn Mitchell, a longtime Blood Ruby community member, um, gives us some reviews. He's a new contributor to us and we're happy to have him uh, as, as such. Um, there's Ian. Um, this week he has 16 reviews for us and that's going to include uh, Kaiju Battlefield Surgeant, which is one we actually reviewed in the larger show and the other part of the show, but still, it's always good to get uh, multiple opinions for stuff. People have different um, outlooks. Uh, he says, uh, he gives it a score of 8.5 out of 10 and he says, worth it. 
It's a long read and it is, man. Um, you have no idea how the author came up with this. Spelunking through the innards of a kaiju, it really stretches the gross actor. I never imagined I can get attached to Banksy, the internal parasite familiar, who's a great character, by the way. Um, if you can stand some horror, this is a great read. Again, 8.5 out of 10 from from Ian. And I, I like, my score was 8.0 out of 10. I thought it was a great read as well. Um, this is one of the few times that we have a very close opinion on the same kind of weird stuff so there you go um also from ion this week we have um this uh revelant revelant jack two by prax venture he gives it an 8.5 of 10 as well he says um town and tower adventure like i like the simplified game system what really made the story live for me where the characters jack lex art and the people of the town in this world may or may not exist beyond the border of the town a good continuation so there you go um also from I on this week is Tower of So, a Gimlet novella. He gives it an 8 out of 10. He says, well written. I like the author's voice. The story is interesting. The characters are good. Although not the focus here. A destructive uploading of human minds creeps me out. But I keep coming back and reading Chris Screen's books. Anyways, this one's an AR Dungeon Tower. Good read. So there we go. Um, we also have War God's Mantle, Underworld. Um, the third book in the War God series by J.A. Hunter and Aaron Crash. He gives it a score is 8.3 out of 10, and he says, Satisfying finish to the trilogy. Stay pretty consistent with the previous two books. The final battle in the Underworld did strain my credulity a bit, but it was fun. I enjoyed the book and the series. A few cultural references eluded me. Was well worth reading. Um, then, after that, it was... Oop, there you go. Um, Stephen Keller's, uh, Keller Hur's Mastermind from Titan Online book number one gives it an 8.6 out of 10 and says, Villains rule. I thought this was very well done, good editing, nice pacing, nice complete story. After Revenge, what to do? It's a great read. So the grant is actually a superhero, um, little pretty story. So produced by Portal Books. It's actually I've always done like pretty decent, um, it's a good, <laughs> it's a good to great kind of stories there. Um, and last from Ayn this week is Koji and the Immortal Phoenix Game Lit Cultivation Wuxia uh, Zanxia novel, The Bonder Legacy, book number two. Uh, Ayn's been on a cultivation kick recently, so I think anything that's remotely game lit or literally he, he, he's, he's throwing it here because he's enjoying them. Um, he gave this story a 8.2 out of 10. Um, he also notes that there are numerous explicit scenes. This book is suitable for mature readers only from the blurb. Um, so I'm not sure if that means if there's um, sexual content or just like graphic violence. Um, so letting you know though, in case you want to pick it up, he says, it's an interesting story. I reviewed the first one and said, it felt like easy mode. Same here. I'm cool with that. I like Koji and his wives and other love interest. He's a hero character that pretty well stomps on all the bad guys. Saves the kingdom. Pretty nice, thoughtful guy. Hard not to like him. Loved by the people of the country. The game lit parts are light. The Wuxia Zanxia is a bit simplified. A bit like a cartoon or comic book in Wuxia Zanxia setting with harem and game lit elements. So, might be some sexual content here. Um, it's well put together. It's not edgy. It works well. Kind of nice not to have to put up with a bunch of emo stuff. I would like a bit more dramatic tension. He has a light novel feel to it. Um, so highest marks for Koji being itself very well. It reminds me a bit of AJ Chandri's stories, which he likes very much. Uh, granted, it's a score of 8.2 out of 10. So there you go. That's, uh, that's, those are Ayn's picks of the week. And that is it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Again, thank you very much for hanging out with me this week. Um, 200 episodes. It's a, it's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of love for the genre. Um, and I've loved every episode and, and reading over 900 little bitty titles by the time that this podcast comes out. Um, probably heading closer to 1,000 at some point. Um, but still, it's, it's a lot of love. A lot of novels read. And I don't regret any of it. I, I love the genre. I loved it so much that even as writing my own stories under the name Ari Mejia and, and putting them out, the Avengers and Terror series, uh, Project Alpha series, uh, Planet Bound series, and more stuff coming up in the near future. Um, but you guys have hung out with me this entire time. And so thank you very much for supporting the podcast every single week. Um, and until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, remember to go read some lit RPG. And hopefully we'll see you in a, for, for another 200 episodes. <laughs>